Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about Amazon Web Services, or AWS. This is one of the world's largest and most popular cloud computing platforms, with customers including companies large and small. Many private individuals also indirectly use AWS. For example, if you watch videos on Netflix, they're normally streamed from an AWS server. Given that AWS has become such an important part of modern computing, in this video I'm going to provide an overview of its services. And then I'm going to show you how to set up a free tier AWS account before providing a demo of the S3 cloud storage service. Like many other cloud providers, Amazon Web Services delivers pay-as-you-go computing over the internet. This allows large companies to reduce their IT capital investment, as well as permitting smaller firms to access applications that they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. And customers of all sizes can rapidly scale their computing requirements either up or down as their needs dictate. In March 2020, the AWS website listed 200 cloud services. These include Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, which provides virtual servers, as well as the Simple Storage Service, or S3, which offers scalable online storage. If we visit the AWS website at aws.amson.com, we can click on Products to get an idea of the range of services available. And straight away under Featured Services, we see Amazon EC2 and the Simple Storage Service, which we'll return to later in the video. Moving down, you'll see there's lots of uh, analytic services, all sorts of those are available down here, lots of exciting things there, things for application integration, and then a very interesting entry under AR and VR, which is Amazon Sumerian, which allows you to build browser-based 3D augmented reality, or AR, and virtual reality VR applications. Returning to our list, we've got a cost management tools. That's very exciting, isn't it? Blockchain tools. There's an Amazon managed blockchain up here for creating scalable blockchain networks for use in a business. And if you don't know what blockchain is, you can learn more in my explaining blockchain video. Talking of business, we then got various business applications. We'd expect those. We're then down to compute, where again, Amazon EC2 is listed for running virtual service in the cloud, and various uh, things linked to uh, EC2 and other ways to uh, obtain virtual private servers and uh, computing capacity from the cloud. If we scroll down here again, we've then got uh, various customer engagement tools, lots of database tools, lots of cloud computing involves uh, using databases uh, online lots of developer tools, as you would expect, and then again something rather interesting under end-user computing, which is Amazon Workspaces. And this is a desktop as a service solution, which means you can create Windows or Linux desktops on the Amazon servers, and then deploy them to any device that's got a browser, such as a PC or a laptop or a Chromebook or a tablet. Below that, we then find we've got various gaming solutions here on Amazon Web Services. There's a fantastic thing called Amazon Lumberyard, which is a cross-platform 3D game engine for creating games and deploying games, integrated with Twitch and also integrated with other Amazon Web Services. It's uh, listed here as a free, but it's free to the extent that you can use Lumberyard for free, but you'll have to pay for the other services you need to deliver final gaming solutions. We then got Internet of Things services, you'd expect loads of those, and then masses under machine learning, a massively growing area of cloud computing. Things like Amazon SageMaker for uh, deploying machine learning models, neural networks. We've also got other things here, things like Amazon Comprehend for getting insights from text, forecast for doing forecasting, uh, uh, various things here for doing, say, chatbots, things like Amazon Lex, personalization engine for doing recommendations on websites, Polly for doing uh, text to, uh, to speech, etc. Amazon recognition with a K for analyzing images and video, etc. Lots and lots of machine learning tools. We then got various management and governance things, media services for things like video transcoding, and various tools to enable you to migrate to Amazon Web Services. Finally, for the last few here, we've got mobile applications available or things to enable you to deploy mobile applications, all sorts of network and content tools, 
and a quantum technologies here, we've got an Amazon Bracket, which allows you to explore and experiment with quantum computing. Finally, a robotics is the AWS RoboMaker, I love that. And what I find amazing, we've got an AWS Ground Station, which is a satellite ground station as a service, just in case you've got some satellites you want to control using Amazon. Finally, lots of security stuff, and then we're down right at the bottom to storage, where we're back to the S3 simple storage service I mentioned at the start, and various other ways of buying storage on the, the Amazon cloud. Now, having seen all this, you might be thinking that's very exciting, which is all lots of really amazing stuff that companies use to, to do things online, but are there ways for individuals to learn about this? And there are. If we look into pricing here, you will see there is a free tier, which enables people to use Amazon services for free in various ways. If we scroll down, you'll see there are certain things which are always free, certain things which are free for a year, and certain things which are short-term trials, which typically means about a two months of free service. And just to give you an idea, you'll see here, for example, you can get 750 hours a month of a small Windows or Linux server on Amazon EC2 for a year, and you can get five gigabytes of storage, standard storage on Amazon S3 also for a year. So what we're now going to do is to take advantage of some of this to delve in and create an account on Amazon Web Services. Right. We're now going to try out AWS. So I'll click on create free account and then enter my email address, password and chosen account name. On the next screen, I'll then set the account type to personal, enter my details and accept the customer agreement before clicking to create the account. Next, we need to enter the details of a credit or debit card that will be used for an identity check and note that a small sum will be charged and refunded as part of this process and that you could run up significant charges if you use services beyond the free tier limits. Anyway, once we've clicked verify and add, we're taken to an identity confirmation page where we set things up to receive a verification code. And once this is entered, we need to select a support plan. And so here I'll choose the free basic option, which will complete our initial account creation process. However, we're not finished yet, not by far, as what we've created so far is a root account which Amazon advises should not be used for most AWS operations due to the security risk. So what we now need to do is to log in, which will take us to the AWS Management Console. And yes, we're now running Amazon Web Services. So, what we're now going to do is to create an Identity and Access Management, or IAM, account, which we'll be using most of the time to access AWS. So, I'll select Services and navigate down here somewhere to find the IAM link. There we are. And uh, this will take us to the Identity and Access Management Service page, where we can select Users and Add User. Here, we need to enter a username, which is local and private to this account, and I think I'll call it EC Admin. I'll then set the access type to AWS Management Console, set a custom password, and remove the option to force a password change at the next sign-in. Next, we need to set permissions, which we'll do by creating a group that I'll call Admin Users, of which I'll assign Administrator Access. I'll then skip the opportunity to add optional tags, before reviewing everything is set up correctly. Yes, it looks OK. And then we'll click to create the user. And there we are. Our IAM user has been successfully created. Although to be able to use it, we need to download a CSV file of user details or to send an email of login instructions. But once this is done, we can log out from our root account and visit the AWS Management Console page to log in again as the IAM user. Here, we now enter the account ID that we downloaded or emailed in the last step, along with the IAM username and password. And this will return us once again to the Management Console, now logged in as the IAM user, in preparation to do something exciting. As you've probably now gathered, using AWS can get a little involved. 
And so I thought I'd give you a demo of one of the most straightforward services, which is a S3 or the simple storage service. And I can do this whole demo using the web-based console here. Now, we're going to be using free tier S3 access, but I just want to take you across to the web page for S3 and look at pricing, just to give you an idea of pricing outside of the free tier. And one of the first things we see here is the same for all Amazon Web Services provision, which is you have to pick a region. This is basically wherever different data centers are you'll actually be using, and they've got different prices for the different regions. We'll stick on the North Virginia there, but I just thought I should point that out. And as you can see in that region, S3 standard storage starts at what's at 2.3 cents per gigabyte a month. And then if you want to less frequently access storage, it's cheaper. So you can go down here, for example, and find a Glacier storage and even Glacier Deep Archive. If you want to store files, you only access very occasionally. You don't mind waiting a period of time to get them back again, but it's massively cheaper to use that kind of storage. Anyway. Let's go back to the management console and we'll give ourselves a little bit more space to do things on the screen here. And we'll look at services and we'll go to uh, down here. There we are, S3. And uh, in S3, we store objects, we store data in buckets. And let's get rid of that as well to give us even more space. And as you can see, we don't have any buckets at the moment. It's got a nice little graphic telling us what to do. But fairly obviously, we need to click on a create bucket. And a bucket has to have a unique name across the whole Amazon Web Services system, so you won't get away with something like test. I think I'll use explaining computers. Let's call it after Stanley, shall we? There we are, that'll do. Uh, I've set my region to London there, which is the closest data center to me. Then we'll click on next. And then the next screen, we get to look at various properties and things. I'll use all the defaults in this demo. And then at the next screen, this is the permission screen. And by default, everything is blocked from public access. But I want to show you something with public access. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that will allow us to have a public access to this bucket, which is clearly something you wouldn't always necessarily want to do. But we'll, uh, we'll do that and click on Next. And then we'll click on a Create Bucket. We've just annoyed Amazon. Never mind. Anyway. We've now got our bucket here, as you can see, explaining computers dot Stanley, and objects can be public. Doesn't mean they're automatically public, but they can be. So if we want to put something into this bucket, we will open up the bucket. I love the whole bucket uh, metaphor. It's fantastic, isn't it? And we'll now uh, upload an object into the bucket. This could be lots of things. We'll just put one file there. We'll do an add files and uh, pick up that file. That'll do, and, and uh, open. And again, it's a multi-stage process. We'll click on next. We'll uh, select there with the, the defaults going across and uh, upload. And there it is, uh, winging its way up to Amazon. And hopefully in a second, there we are. Our file has arrived in our bucket into a Explaining Computers Stanley. And uh, we click on that file. We can see there we could uh, see its information, things like that. We could uh, download the file if we wanted to. I'm sure you can imagine what that would be. I won't bother doing that. And we've also here got the URL of the file, which I could just go down there and uh, take a copy of that link address. And if we therefore go to uh, another tab, let's go over here and open another tab up, I could paste that into there and it won't work because that file is not yet public. So by default, the file isn't. But if we go back to uh, where we are, we find the right place, Christopher, there we are. Uh, we could then go and uh, make it public by clicking on a make public like that. And hopefully that has worked. We go back under permissions that it's now um, publicly accessible as a read-only object. Yes, it is. So we went back over here and just uh, refreshed that. There we are. We've accessed the file in a web browser. So as that hopefully shows you, you can use uh, Amazon Web Services at S3 as a means of uh, sharing files, potentially very large files. Remember, you've only got a five gigabytes uh, free under the free tier but it wouldn't cost very much to store a very large file if you want to say to exchange it with someone using this service. And uh, just to be a tidy, I think we'll now go and uh, get rid of things and sort things out, get rid of that. Actions, we'll go and uh, delete the file. No, don't worry, things lying around for the sake of it. We can delete stuff there and it's going to have uh, gone in a second. There it is. Uh, we've got nothing in our bucket now. I'll go back to S3 and we can see the bucket. And if we want to, we can also delete the bucket as well. Let's be really, really tidy. Get rid of that. Didn't last very long, this bucket, did it? We'll click on Delete. It'll ask us to confirm the name of the bucket we want to delete. And uh, there we are. We've once again got no buckets in 
Amazon S3, but uh, hopefully that demonstration was useful to show you the basic operation of this uh, Amazon Web Service. One of the most common questions I get asked is how to obtain or enhance a career in computing. Always my answer is to increase your skills base and today one of the best things to learn about are cloud computing services such as AWS. If you want me to make more AWS videos, please let me know down in the comments section. For example, I could do a video on setting up an EC2 virtual server, something I've been experimenting with quite a bit recently. Very exciting, at least I think it is anyway. Or I could do a video, for example, on using an S3 to host a website, or maybe even look at an Amazon Sumerian and make some kind of an online virtual reality application. I've not tried looking at that yet. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.